All right. Um, welcome, welcome. Please like and sub for the algos. We have Alan here with us. Um, as you guys know, Alan has a lot of uh, insight on things that you know we, we may be interested in. Um, Alan, I may not be speculating about what's going on with the S1, but can you speculate for us? Give me an idea. Well, we know that they have leases to maintain. We know they need capital to build wells. We also know that um, there are some people, and this is this is not coming from me, just so to state that publicly. <clears throat> but there are a lot of people believing that um, you're going to see an announcement soon saying that Chevron is either in some sort of partnership or is purchasing um, specific rights to part of the property over there. Um, I do not know that that is true or not. I know that they did devote $4 billion to that specific region. And I know that these folks are trying to raise capital so that they can show the true value of what we hold. And so I think we're going to see some very big changes very soon. I believe that the S1 was to raise funding. There's nothing nefarious going on. Um, I believe that uh, the folks that are holding that are going to be very happy um, as things continue to progress. And I can tell you big things are coming fast. And so keep your eye on MMTLP. You, you heard it from him. Um, I was kind of thinking something very, very similar. So um, a lot of people were thinking about like the negative side of it, but I was thinking about the capital side of it. So, um, I mean, it kind of kind of feels nice to have somebody else kind of back my original thought, but I didn't want to, you know, throw that out there and be the only one, you know, thinking that. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like a... Um, it, it, I mean, it just caught everyone off guard that we got another S1. You know what I mean? Right. Yes. And if you notice, there's going to be another amendment, and we know those are typically 90 days apart. Yeah, I, I did notice there's that. there's no valuations on that, and they can't put a dollar amount on it while we're still in limbo. So that tells you that the company is very sure that this is most likely going to be wrapped up within the 90 days. If you look at it typically as 90 days between S1 amendments. Mm hmm and the company can't put a dollar amount till this is resolved. Now, and we know there's a typical 90-day time frame, so that should give you some sort of idea on um, their thoughts on a resolution. I can't speak for them, mm -hmm. but that's just what that says to me. Now, my original thought was like, oh, okay, well, maybe they'll be, you know, be, or be able to be traded by the DTCC again, right? But then I looked at it, and it said direct um, offering, right? So it's going direct to what Roth? Um, so that, that won't give them access, uh, like back with a DTC, correct? That's correct. Uh, okay. So this is just a income generating DPO. Um, I think that you should just hang on to your seats if you are an MMTLP holder, because if the company believes this will be completely done and wrapped up in 90 days, why else would you post an S1? Mm-hmm. What, that's what everybody's looking at for time frame. I think that because of what we're seeing and what we're doing as a whole entire group of retail, I believe there's enough pressure that um, people are going to be very happy here very soon. I think so too. And I think that this morning with you know the, uh, the abundance of halts um, with the code M, I think that that's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I do want to say that um, I think that people should, if you are a crypto person, you should look in the group chat for what I posted. I believe that we are going to see crypto become very unstable here in the next little future, and not forever, but uh, for a little while. And when we typically see things become unstable, that's really where people make and lose their money. Keep so keep in keep in mind unstable can be keep in mind. To, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. Keep in mind unstable can be up or down now too. That's that's exactly what I was just saying. Oh okay. <laughs> I was gonna say you know stable brings huge unstableness brings huge opportunities for loss and huge opportunities for profit. So like 
get your magic ball out or your you know genie in the bottle or whatever the hell you use if you're lucky in crypto and uh this might be a really good time to uh, pay attention to that yeah yeah i thank you i absolutely agree alan um and you know it's it's good to hear you know obviously your insight because i know how much time that you put into this um again guys please like and sub for the algos um this is where we hang out so if you guys want to if you guys want to run things by me if you want to run things by alan anybody in the group um i mean we have a group full of professionals in just about every field so so i want to leave everybody with one little side note this is something that a lot of people don't know <clears throat> i am working with our own little private group um and we are working very hard to create an enormous amount of pressure from attacks that are coming on all sides of them so that we can create a fair market with a lot more transparency and if we are successful retail is going to have a much better time at at least being on the same playing field as uh, some of these big companies. We won't have the money, so they'll always have an advantage, you know, when they play with billions and trillions of dollars. However, if things at least become fair, um, I think you're going to see a lot of great things on the horizon for retail investors within the next, you know, year or two as they continue to change and evolve the rules. And as we continue to expose and, you know, break the loopholes open and they have to close them, every one of those steps makes it better for retail as a whole because it makes it to where they actually have to be transparent with us. And yeah. so I believe that retail is going to see some very big changes coming in the near future, but not, I wouldn't say like immediate future for overall market changes on how things are done. But I believe you're going to see a complete revamp of how some of these big players get to do what they do. I think you're going to see the rules change pretty significantly in the next six to nine months. Pretty much like a like a cat system, right? How the cat system was delayed. It'll be like an audit, like an audited trail. Yeah, I think because you have the Department of Justice looking into everybody, and now we have agencies that have initials for their names that are involved. And you have all these other folks that are literally breaking down what's happening and exposing the things that most people don't even understand were happening. Mm. And so as these things start to happen, um, I think you're going to see really big things because right now we have something going on that is absolutely unprecedented. It is absolute insanity. So we have antitrust laws, right? Mm-hmm. That stops somebody from, like, say, Walmart buying Fred Myers and Target and everybody else to force you to go to one place. Okay. <laughs> why are they just being ignored? And why do we have two companies that control almost 80% of the New York Stock Exchange within two companies? It sounds like a, like a monopoly to me. <laughs> this, this sounds like um, some very severe laws that have been broken. That have now been addressed to the government to say, hey, why do you allow this? What the heck is going on? And what are you going to do about it? It, it, almost, so it I, almost sounds like financial treason at, at a point. Well, I mean, I, I'm not going to go and I, speculate yeah, on that I, because I, yeah. it directly affects what I'm doing. Yeah. But I can tell you that we aren't sitting on our hands. If we're being quiet and we aren't saying something, it's because we are very, very busy with what we're doing. Yeah, And we are absolutely fighting for retail, and everybody wants to call this a game, but we have realized it is a war, and we are definitely going at it. And they're fighting dirty, so, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's pretty insane, some of the things we're finding, because these guys have gotten to a point of greed that makes Madoff look like a speed bump, and... They don't. They did. They quit trying to hide it. They got so. They don't even care. They got their head blown up so big that they're so amazing within their own mind that nobody can do anything to them, and they can just have free reign to do what they want. And I think that was a big mistake on their behalf because now people are like, "Well, look at all this stuff we don't even have to dig for. Like this is out in the open." 
Well, they let it get so bad that, that they, they gave us time to do our own research. And they let people that, you know, are just, you know, average Joes learn, like, you know, intimate market plumbing. You know what I mean? Um, and I think oh, that was their here's, mistake. Here's the big mistake they made. They attacked another group of retail. They thought it was going to be a big mess like the ape community initially was. But we learned something, right? So when the ape community came together, gosh, you know, that was a huge mess for how they organized and how they got together. Mm -hmm. But they figured it out, right? Like they figured out how to align retail investors, how to communicate, how to get people on the same page. And, you know, it took a while to figure this out. But we didn't have that problem because we were able to look at what they did and how they brought people together and how they past information and how things fundamentally should work and so we were much faster at it because we had a blueprint to follow we didn't have to figure it out as we went yeah absolutely and so now you have retail investors that are becoming very educated in the actual market plumbing and how things functions or how the functions work of like the overall system not just hey i push this button to buy this but now I understand what happens when I push that button, where it goes, how it works. And so they did something really dangerous by allowing retail to have a reason to go get knowledge up. And I believe they're going to see that that was a big mistake, uh, giving us the knowledge that or the opportunity to go get the knowledge we needed. Because when you're when you have more information, you make better decisions. And I think you're going to see retail continue sharing DD with like this channel is super invaluable because we don't just go and say, I like this ticker today. Like, this is a good thing there, Joe. You should uh, buy some of this. Yep. We go and say, hey, did you guys see this report? Do you understand what this report means? Okay, good. Now you can make a better decision on that. And so that type of information is invaluable and in the way that this group works. Um, I love the Mafia, man. It's it's like an amazing place to be, and I love all you guys. And Talal, for God's sake, man, give the ladies a break for one day. I mean, you're gonna, I'm gonna have to start buying stock and hip surgery, you know, uh, devices or whatever here at this point. If you don't slow down. <laughs> Alan. <laughs> oh God. Love you guys. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, that was Alan. Thank you very much again. Please like and sub for the algos. I will catch you guys later. Thanks, Alan.